Hi, welcome to Pencil College. Moving on in chapter 11.2, we'll be learning about different types of trigger ratios. Okay, so before we move on to something else today, okay, we will basically just recap, okay, what we've learned so far. Recall that these are the trigger ratios for complementary angles, okay, so for complementary angles, and we have already learned this in the chapter 11.1 okay so if you have forgotten please go review the videos on chapter 11.1 okay additional mathematics okay how about that for supplementary angles okay this is actually mentioned in the videos for emath okay uh, trigonometry okay so you can go check out the videos for for supplementary angles okay if you've forgotten and uh, probably something new that you know to to most of you today is the trigger ratios of negative angles okay these are not too difficult to understand so i'll just briefly mention it sine of negative theta is just negative sine theta the cosine of negative theta is just cosine theta and the tangent of negative theta is just negative tangent theta okay at this point in time if you're for some of you who are new to this function tangent okay tangent can be defined as sine theta over cosine theta okay just uh, briefly mention this okay more importantly what we're going to learn today are the trigger ratios of special angles okay so what are special angles okay specifically we're referring to the angles 30 degrees 45 degrees and 60 degrees okay and in, in this video i'll show you the proof okay for some of the ratios and i will also show you how you can read off from this read off some values from this table Okay, so maybe I'll start by drawing, by proving the, the 30 and 60 degree angle triangle. Okay, so suppose I have this right angle triangle over here, and then I'll just let this angle be 30, and I'll let this angle be 60 degrees. Okay, so let's just call this triangle A, B, and C. Okay, and suppose I also give you the lengths of, of F, uh, B, C, and A, B. So let's say I let B, C be 1, and I let this be root 3. Okay, so using Pythagoras theorem, okay, you can actually work out the length of AB. So AB square is just 1 square plus root 3 square. Okay, and now working this out further, you'll just get AB equals to 2. Okay, so this is 2. Okay, so recall that the sine of 30 degrees, okay, so sine of 30 degrees, if this is, if the 30 degrees is my, is my reference angle, then this must be my opposite. This will be my adjacent, and this will be my hypotenuse. Okay, so sine of 30 degrees is just opposite, which is 1, over hypotenuse, which is 2. Okay, so let's move on also to find cosine 30 degrees and tangent 30 degrees. So tangent 30 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, so adjacent is just 3, hypotenuse is just 2. Okay, and tangent 30 degrees is just opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over root 3. Okay, and you, you kind of see that this coincides with our table over here. So, how do we read off this table? So, for example, if I want the sine of 30 degrees, okay, it will just be half. Okay, and uh, just a few more examples. So, let's say the tangent of 45 degrees, okay, is just 1. Okay, and then maybe one last one. So, how about the cosine of 60 degrees? Okay, it's just half. Okay, so that's how you make use of this table over here. Okay, so maybe I'll just do another proof, okay, for the 45 angle, 45 degree, rather, triangle. Okay, so suppose I have a triangle over here. Okay, suppose this is a right angle triangle. Okay, and if this is 45 degrees, then this must also be 45 degrees, okay, since the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So let's call this ABC, for example, triangle ABC. Okay, so let us also give it, uh, give it some, uh, some, some values. Okay, so suppose I let AB be 1 and AC be 1. Then using Pythagoras theorem, I, can, I will find that BC is root 2. Okay, so let us try finding the sine of 45 degrees, okay. So suppose I let this angle, okay, be my reference angle. So this will then be my opposite, this will be my adjacent, and this will be my hypotenuse. Okay, so sine of 45 degrees is simply just opposite 
over hypotenuse. So opposite is 1, hypotenuse is root of 2. Okay, opposite is 1, hypotenuse is root of 2. Okay, and uh, the cosine of 45 degrees is just adjacent okay, over hypotenuse. So adjacent is 1, hypotenuse is 2, root 2, sorry. And then finally, the tangent of 45 degrees, okay, is just opposite, okay, over adjacent. So it's just 1 over 1, which can be simplified to just 1. Okay, so if you look at our table over here, it sort of makes sense as well, because the sine of 45 degrees, okay, so the sine of 45 degrees, okay, as we have proven here, is 1 over root 2. Okay, so over here is also 1 over root 2. 2 okay and similarly for the cosine as well as the tangent values okay you can read off the table okay so let's move on to example number two okay okay in example number two okay we are given that the uh, sine of theta okay sorry or rather theta okay is just 135 degrees Okay, and we're asked to find the cosine, the sine, and the tangent of theta. Okay, so recall that theta is measured in a anti-clockwise direction, okay, starting from here. So this is my theta in this case, and theta is a 135 degrees. Okay, and since theta is 135 degrees, okay, then alpha must be, must be 180 degrees minus 135, which is just 45 degrees. Okay, so meaning to say my alpha, which is over here. Okay, so this is alpha and alpha is just 45 degrees. Okay, so what we're going to do here is to first work on angle alpha and this right angle triangle over here in red. Okay, so the right angle triangle, okay, what we're going to do, we're going to drop a perpendicular line down, okay, to form this right angle triangle. Okay, and since alpha is 45 degrees, okay, we're going to make use of this column of values over here. Okay, so let me just highlight, okay. Okay, so alpha is 45 degrees, okay, and we're going to make use of, let's say, the sine of 45 degrees. Okay, so over here. Okay, so the sine of 45 degrees is 1 over root 2. So meaning to say, okay, meaning to say, okay, for alpha, the sine of alpha is 1 over root 2 okay and since alpha is over here this will be my opposite this will be my adjacent and this will be my hypotenuse so the opposite is 1 and then the hypotenuse is root 2 okay so using Pythagoras theorem we can also find that this is 1 okay so I'm just filling in the values of the triangle over here okay so what we're gonna do next okay is to indicate our values very carefully if you realize okay this length over here okay is the negative is in the negative direction of the x-axis okay so it's the y-axis is the x-axis okay so therefore I, I labeled this length to be negative one okay so let us now find the cosine of theta so the cosine of theta, okay, is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse, okay, and in this case, my adjacent is negative 1, okay, so negative 1 over hypotenuse, which is root 2, okay, so therefore the cosine of theta is just negative 1 over root 2. Now, for the sine of theta, the sine of theta is defined as opposite over hypotenuse okay so opposite is positive 1 okay and hypotenuse is 1 over root 2 so this is just 1 over root 2 and finally the tangent of theta is defined as opposite over adjacent okay so opposite is 1 okay and adjacent is negative 1 okay take note of the negative over here okay so negative 1 so the final answer is just negative 1 Okay, before we move on, okay, I'm just uh, going to reinforce our understanding of the ASTC diagram. Okay, so recall that in the sine quadrant, which is the quadrant that we're now in, okay, let me just use a, a, a different color to highlight this. 
Okay, so recall that now theta is in the sine quadrant because this is my theta, okay, the, the highlighted angle over here. And in the sine quadrant, only the sine of theta is positive, as you can see over here, okay? Whereas the cosine of theta and the tangent of theta will definitely give us a negative value, okay? So I just want to point out this very important fact negative values for cosine of theta and tangent of theta okay okay let's move on to the next example